Welcome to Basic Binges, everyone, on the Nom Talk Network. I'm your host, Mike Manalo, and today we are, as always, every Friday, going to talk about She-Hulk. We are down to our second to last episode uh, of the show. And this one was a big one, guys. Um, you know, just, you know, we I think a lot of people were getting ready and gearing up for this because there's such a huge affection for one of the the primary guest star on this show. And we are going to dissect the living crap out of everything that happened in this episode momentarily. But before we do, I want to introduce uh, our panel of amazing guests uh, today. Um, I'd love to start with Jen Athey. Um, Jen, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm Jennifer Athey. I am really excited to be here yet again. Mike, thank you so much for having me. Um, I am a cosplayer and the executive officer for Southern California for the Avengers Initiative fan cosplay group. So check us out on Avengers Cosplay on Instagram. And yeah, other than that, I have a really boring normal life. So that's me. <laughs> that's what she wants you to think. Uh, she moonlights as a real superhero uh, at night, just so folks. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Sorry. Uh, We'll you learned nothing from the episode. Come on. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I didn't say anything. Uh, moving on. Um, Mike Lee, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi. Yes, I'm Mike Lee, and uh, I'm from the Nerds of Color, like Mr. Mike right here, the other Mike right here. And uh, I also write for the uh, That's It LA, and we live entertainment. All right, all right. Um, and as always, I'm Mike Manalo from the Nerds of Color, whattowatch.com, and That's It LA. Um, we got a, a greeting from Cue Ball. Hey, Cue Ball, evening to you. And yes, everything's well. Everything's going to be even better uh, now that we're going to dive into uh, a, an epic episode of this series. Um, first things first, I think uh, ground rules. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, um, we actually have a fun little game uh, that you know our <laughs> viewers can watch. Um, as you're watching and enjoying the show, uh, you could redeem your nom talk points to make us do crazy things. Hopefully not too crazy. I promise, you know, everything crazy that you want me to do probably will actually cost real money. Uh, but for nom talk points, you can actually just have me do something like whenever somebody says hydrate, we can drink from, you know, our our liquid supplies here and, and hydrate ourselves. Uh, you can make us talk in third person. I won't go too into detail on the other stuff because it's way too embarrassing for me to encourage you guys to use. But if you end up discovering it and making us, you know, abusing us as your your go your hosts uh, to do all of it, um, I can't stop you. That being said, uh, use it responsibly. With great power comes great responsibility, and uh, we we hope you'll have mercy on us. Um, but uh, we also understand if you don't want to. Um, that being said. I think we're ready to talk some She-Hulk, right, guys? Yeah, um, I think so. Right. Let's let's do first impressions, just uh, overall thoughts on the episode. Uh, Jen, would you like to start? What'd you think? I well, for one, their promos leading up to this episode were so perfect because it was like the character you've been waiting for, and then it's this dorky leapfrog guy in the <laughs> in the trailer, and I was like. Uh, no one's been waiting for him. Uh, they did the cute little audition one where they had Tatiana and Ginger and um, Mark Ruffalo all auditioning to be Leapfrog. <laughs> and then at the end, Kermit. And I'm like, well, that would be genius. That would be um, amazing. So that kind of set the tone, like the tongue in cheek tone, I think, for some of the stuff that happened. But man, it blew me away. I was like, yes, this was a great episode. And each week I say, oh, this is my favorite. But this one might this one might have topped it. And they had some great little just great little notes that I'm sure we'll hit on throughout that um, just gave it that much more detail that I really appreciated. So I was I was really excited by this episode. Love it. Um, Mike, what about you? What you think? Yeah, uh, like what Jennifer has been saying about those little details, I, I was impressed with how it kind of um, how aware it was of, of the, this world that, that they're living, that they're working in. And, you know, they're aware of these certain events and they're aware of the certain events. There, there's a lot of Easter eggs in here. Um, but oh, there's also an expansion of some of the politics. I'm not, but also it's just very fun episode overall um, because of 
the one character we've been waiting for. I don't know <laughs> if we can talk about it yet, just yet, but yeah. No, no, let's, yeah. I, I mean, think... yeah, the, the the hot dog character, right? Mustard and ketchup. <laughs> yeah. Magic <laughs> <kind of> devil. <laughs> very true, very true. Uh, it, you know, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to blow the doors open here and just, you know, remove the moratorium altogether. Let's talk Matt Murdock, right? I mean, like, this is this is the episode everyone was waiting for. Um, I yeah. Uh, overall thoughts from me. Um, there, I do have criticisms as I deal with most episodes of the show and everything like that. But that being said, whenever we get a chance to see Charlie Cox in the saddle in the costume doing the 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 Daredevil Matt Murdock thing, it's amazing, and I couldn't be more happy with his appearance here. Uh, part of that is just how amazing Charlie is. But the other, and and this is this is the aspect of it that we could never get from any other series, is the chemistry that he shares with uh, Tatiana Maslany. They Ooh. are they are so good together. They are Ooh. super funny together. And it's it's, and I'm going to say something that's going to piss off a lot of incels on the internet. It's all in the sur- It's all done without ever betraying the character of Matt Murdock, and without ever betraying the Netflix portrayal of this character. Um, if you had issues with it, if you were going online to say Matt Murdock doesn't smile, Matt Murdock doesn't joke, Matt Murdock doesn't have sex, then quite frankly, oh. you, you weren't watching any Daredevil series. Right. You weren't reading any Daredevil comic books because he did all of those things in the pre-existing Netflix series. And even if you didn't watch that Netflix series, he does those things in the comic books, guys. So if you're just complaining to complain at this point, those complaints are invalid. I'm going to he say did it in right the movie, now. too. Yeah, he does. It, uh, <laughs> we, we don't talk about that one, but there's a lot of sex <laughs> in that movie, too. Um, so so Daredevil gets horny uh, at a lot of times. There you go. Literally. Um, yes, literally. Um, no, uh, honestly speaking, I was watching after after this episode. I went back and started watching um, clips of Defenders and clips of, of just the OG show on Netflix as well. His, his title, his namesake show. Um, and even just the way that he was interacting with Jessica Jones, the jokes that they were flying, throwing at each other. Um, it, it's very much like that here, but even more chemistry because you've got such a terrific performer in Tatiana Maslany. Um, let's talk sex appeal and chemistry, right? Uh, Jen, any thoughts on, on Jen and... <laughs> Uh, Matt, uh, basically. So I will uh, up front. I have started watching Daredevil, the Netflix series. Okay. I'm not very far into it. Sure. Um, I don't have a lot of time to sit and watch things. I have to carve oh. out that time. So um, I started and I like it. And I feel like I don't feel like I've been watching two different characters from watching this episode and watching him. And that little hint of his accent sneaking through. <laughs> He, and he's he's an attractive guy he's smart he's funny uh, you know he's yeah there there's some sex appeal there that the walk of shame part was <laughs> i laughed so hard oh my god it was perfect everything i don't know i just thought it was a great episode to bring him in i'm glad they waited this long because yeah. as she says in the um the previously on at every episode previously on my show and I think people need to remember this show is called She-Hulk Attorney at Law, not Matt Murdock and that green chick. So people who've been waiting and waiting for Matt Murdock, the ones who are mad, I'm kind of laughing at them because what did they expect? Yeah, what did you expect? <laughs> what would you yeah. expect? Yeah. So, um, no, I thought it was really well done. Their chemistry is great. It was, they're so cute together. And I, I don't use that word a lot. I mean, they're grown ups, of course, but. <laughs> Um, it was just, it was just really adorable. And you can tell she's like, oh man, I really like this guy. And I would have been a little more wary considering the last guy and then look how that turned out. But, um, you know, I, I think they did a good job with it. I have no complaints, but I'm not an incel that lives in my mom's basement either. So there's that. <laughs> Bravo. Well said, well said. And, and agreed. I, I think it's hilarious that she, you could tell that she's definitely attracted to him from the get-go but the first words that come out of her mouth are who's this asshole <laughs> and she's like talking to uh, it's i i just thought it, we've all I, been there yeah i thought it was so funny by the way matt as a lawyer god damn he's good i i freaking <laughs> just, so good such a good lawyer it, i mean he's he's a really good lawyer right so you know he's a really uh, good lawyer a really good lawyer um mike chemistry sex appeal what did you think 
Well, I'm going to focus on the the Jen aspect because man, she she was falling for him hard, I, and, but she didn't want to outright say it either because the heartbeat scene it was just like, no, my heart's not beating fast, and she's all flustered and everything. Like, I don't believe you at all. And then he goes out, beats up all the goons or henchmen. We never get that clearly defined either. But um, <laughs> it, it it's so much fun to watch them banter back and forth. Uh, I'm going to kind of jump around here, especially um, when after Matt does the walk of shame and you hear Jen talk about, um, you know, how satisfied she was. She's like, you know, that was the most satisfying ending ever. It's like, oh, my gosh. You know, she's talking about two things, you know, it's the episode and the and, and what happened. The coitus. After. The coitus. Yes. <laughs> how Pete, how, what's the rating of this, basically? But, um, yeah, it, it's it's all good and fun. Um, I, I like that we're actually getting to see some kind of coitus, I guess. Or can we go that far? No. But I actually see some sex in this kind of show. It, it, it's so it just shows how much Marvel is just willing to change and adapt and grow. And so it's, it's more of a maturity thing, but also be fun with it because this is a comedy after all. And we get to see Matt do like Jennifer said, the walk of shame and they show him walking with his boots. It's like in, in one hand is like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> that, that, that would be a typical superhero thing. It's like, where does he go after that? Because right. yeah. So yeah, it, I, I liked it. If if there's one thing about the show that they just they really know what they're doing on it's it's subversion right and you know having not just a uh, a, a a guy do the walk of shame but a superhero do the walk of shame it's funny it's, it's just it's really funny as hell just to see that scene it was it was one of the funniest openly laugh out loud moments in the series I think is this image of Daredevil <laughs> walking down the street with his shoes in his hand. Yeah, After. it was going. It was going to like what you were saying about the the incels, just thinking, "Oh, this is a usually tough guy," and now we get to see him in this most kind of vulnerable <laughs> moment, basically <laughs> embarrassing as well. Like you said, walk of shame. So it, it's great, honestly. I will. I will say the one thing that I wish that they did a little more. Um, I would have. There, there is a larger story. Um, that's really been threaded through the episodes of this series. You know, um, a lot, a lot of um, issues going on in Jen's life. Uh, certainly, the blood issue, the intelligentsia issue, all of this stuff. I did wish that this story, the story here in this episode, was a little bit more intertwined with all of that. And we don't get that connection really until the end. Um, it ends up really being a, as they used to call the X file, you know, some of the episodes in the X files, a monster of the week episode. Right. Um, and until the, that very end and ha having Matt kind of involved in that main storyline and progressing that main storyline, I would have, I really would have loved to see him involved there. Um, but I get why they didn't do it. And the narrative and the storyline here is such that, you know, you needed another lawyer, you need an opposing lawyer. And with the setup with Luke, uh, a couple of episodes back, um, we understand why Matt would defend him, you know, because that's his that's his personal tailor as well, um, which, by the way, I, I don't think we've mentioned it or talked about it at all um, in, in most of our shows. But how great is is Luke Jacobson, I oh. think, as as a character, <laughs> as a comedic uh, relief, comedy, uh, comic relief uh, character uh, with thoughts, on, thoughts on him throughout this entire episode, because he's kind of a, almost an MVP here. Um, Jen. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I know I shouldn't, but that, gre be you big greasy buffalo, that line, that, it was beautiful. He just, because he can get yeah. away with it. He has that sass, he has that, the confidence. Like, I wouldn't tell this six foot seven green woman anything. Like, I'd be like, yes, ma'am. No, he's like, look, buffalo, we're, you, know, you just lumbered in here. And he doesn't, he doesn't let up. Um, but at the end of the day, he forgave her and he did the right thing. He's going to make her dress. Um, I think all throughout the series, I've enjoyed him. You know, the setup with the the Easter egg. Well, it's not an Easter egg. It was a hint. The helmet what we saw a few episodes ago. Um, I figured somehow he might play back into it. So I was excited that we would get to see him again. And I don't know. He's just a lot of fun. He's he's just the sassy. He's like another, not Ginger, Nikki, Ginger Gonzaga's yeah. character. Like yeah. Nikki's, she's probably my favorite character in the whole show in general uh, but cool. yeah he's like 
when he pops up, it's always a gem. It's just going to be delightful. So I enjoy him a lot. I, I do too. With everything going on in this episode, it's a shame that we didn't get a whole lot of Mickey, but, but man, um, Griffin Matthews, who plays Luke, um, you guys might know him from the flight attendant. Um, he is, he is just excellent and he's crushing this role, honestly. So I, I love that we did get a lot more Luke because we're, we're, we've got several, every episode, I think, obviously, of Ginger and Nikki, who, which not a bad thing, never a bad thing. We love her, but we barely will get a whole lot of Luke. And with two episodes that we got, I'm so glad that we got it. Um, Michael, thoughts on, on Griffin and thoughts on his performance as Luke? Uh, what'd you think? I, I don't think I can add any more because Jennifer said it so beautifully about it. Uh, he has this kind of um, confidence that you just can't really get away from. He's like, um, I, I I don't know what else I can add, honestly. That, yeah, <laughs> it was it, he had some great singers on there, honestly. Just seeing him <laughs> still sewing as he's tied to a chair and like doing all this it, it's a really silly moment, but but it's it's super funny. And his his snaps at at Jen, um, as terrible and as mean as they are, <laughs> you just couldn't help but laugh at them because it's just. But they're truthful, so though, honestly. Yeah. They're, 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 there's a little bit of honesty in it because yeah. you know you you cross him and you're you're just yeah you're you're on the wrong side of yeah. it. Though. Why so. why wouldn't that be someone who's dead to you? You know because yeah. like you're. You're, I wanted. made you a costume. I made you gala dresses and everything, and <laughs> and you still went against me. Come on. And yeah. and just because that that guy was wearing green, whoever told you you should wear this color, you need to go shoot them. Like <laughs> yeah. what? So he's he. You always know where you stand with Luke, and I think that's that's nice in a character. You know, we don't you don't get a lot of that often, especially in something like this, where there's so many people around Jennifer that have ulterior motives and not good ones. So I think even though he's not sugarcoating it, he's not very nice sometimes, she, he's refreshingly honest. And I think she appreciates that, you know, and she of course wants her fancy clothes for her unique physique. So <laughs> I get it, I get it. <laughs> it's it's one of the best things about this show. Uh, you know, Luke, Luke has, uh, existed in the comics. He's a very obscure character, uh, is a very obscure character, technically. And that's something that the show really does bring prominence on. It shines a light on a lot of really obscure characters. We had Mr. Immortal uh, a couple of weeks back. Um, you know, we, we've got all like the entire group therapy session uh, at at uh, Abomination at Emil Blonsky's ranch. Uh, all obscure characters. Uh, and this week's no exception because we get the debut of Leapfrog, <laughs> um, one of one of the the dumbest <laughs> D-list villains ever to grace the pages of Marvel Comics. Um, and we've got him in a very starring role here in this episode. Um, thoughts on the debut of Leapfrog? Uh, Mike, um, I'd love to start with you. I thought it was the most hilarious thing ever because like, I never heard of this character before until until the, we got the tease of it and it, it just works honestly um jessica gal wrote wrote it perfectly um just to have him acknowledge this whole idea of this guy's leapfrog and he has no special powers <laughs> his suit is like his <laughs> it's the main thing that that's known about him there's nothing else really particularly special and then they went in further with his idiocy going like you're not supposed to put jet fuel in it, in the rocket boosters and you're not it's all flammable and it, it's just very hilarious and they made him more look like the trolls that are representing in you know how angry um people are at there's not enough daredevil or any of this he's just a plain old idiot They're like i can be a superhero i can do this and it, it's just it was very funny and and yeah, he's just he's just very funny, I thought. Yeah. Jen, what about you? Thoughts? He leaned into that frog theme. Like, <laughs> and I can yeah. appreciate dedication to a theme. If you could see the rest of the room around me, it's it's made up to be like if it was Peggy Carter's room. It's not just a, a cosplay room. So I get it, but there was a lily pad, the frogger <laughs> machine. I was like, okay, that was pretty the cool. men. Yeah, and, and the his uh <laughs> Tadpoles. You want to call them the tadpoles? <laughs> tadpoles. <laughs> oh. It was um, oh, the fake coach. swamp stuff he had, like the fake yeah. lights hanging and everything. I was like, this guy's really into his frog theme. And 
why? Like I, when he was describing the suit he wanted too, and he wanted armor. So he wanted Iron Man because he even described the voice, the AI voice, right? And then he wanted the shield that was bulletproof. So he wants Steve's shield. And then he's like, and I want to shoot poison darts like those frogs. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> dude, no. <laughs> so he just, he was ridiculous. He, he was a terrible bad guy with his, the lily pad. This is his secret lair because it has a big neon sign on it. Like, that's not very secret. He he was ridiculous and he thinks he's a bad guy, but he's so dumb. And the scene when when she tells Matt Murdock that, you know, whatever, his, when they're talking about what his origin is or his secret, she's like, it rhymes with rich parents. So, <laughs> yeah, this is just a kid who's been given everything his whole life. And now he wants to be the leapfrog, which super tough name there. And... And he builds this ridiculous, like, teenage boy hangout instead of an actual lair. I was like, I feel like this if my son had come up with a, a super villain when he was about 14, that may have been what he came up with. No, maybe when he was 10. Yeah. <laughs> rip it and rip it, right? I mean, <laughs> in the green car, too. I just remembering <laughs> that. Yeah, it, yeah, everything green. Yeah. It really just, you know, it really reminded me because I think weirdly enough batman does exist in the mcu uh, eternals established that so i gotta wonder if this guy watched adam west batman because his his character the the you know the costume the tadpoles the henchmen the the lily pad you know oh. all this stuff it, it really harkens back to the types of campy 60s villains that you'd see in in the adam west batman series and everything like that i'm like he he probably watched that a, l a little too much um you know was playing with one of those leapfrog toys that you know kids get when they're you know those. growing up yeah there you go and looked at the the brand and was like i shall become leapfrog and then just like you know used his rich parents to buy a suit that he immediately destroys and ruins um it's just it's just very ironic as well that, you know, he here he is, he's trying to be a hero, but clearly it's not for the right reasons. You know, I mean, he's trying to stop these guys at the beginning, but you devolve from that to I'm going to kidnap someone and force <laughs> them to make a suit. And I'm like, what the hell happened to the hero thing? That's not what heroes do. Clearly, you didn't you're, you're doing all this. You did had no intention of being the hero, I guess. Maybe you just wanted to be famous or you wanted to be. A rich influencer or anything like that it's just it's it's very oh my god uh reprehensible for lack of a better term terrible terrible character a loser character um but ugh, yes anyone anyone with rich parents that isn't named tony stark i suppose um you know kind of sucks so there you go but but yeah, yeah. moments too let's be real <laughs> He, yes he definitely does civil war was like literally on here and i was just like man tony's just wrong throughout this entire thing the only thing bigger than his ego is his guilt complex so uh but yeah but we still love tony 3000 um we will never ever love leapfrog in anything or for <laughs> anything that he does so uh this is probably the last we'll see of him um but yeah um epic courtroom scene of course with matt murdoch uh which i love um you know obviously poor luke and you know him really and jen being at odds poor jen she just wants her dress you know um that that bar scene between jen and matt was really like charming steamy as well um i i do have to wonder um it does make me wonder if if you did watch the Netflix show or if you're a fan of the Netflix show, um, he really has good chemistry as well with Deborah Ann Wall. Um, Charlie Cox does, who mm. plays um, uh, Karen Page, uh, who ends up being a lot, uh, you know, a, a pretty long time love interest um, with a lot of will they won't they tension um, with Charlie through a lot of the series. But also, um, you know, actually, yeah, thinking about it. Why anyone would think Matt Murdock has never had sex when, you know, Karen Page and Electra are in his life. And it's just like, He's such a playboy. Um, you know, it's, it's it's funny to consider, you know, man babies crying about her him having sex. Projecting. Uh, yes, yeah, seriously. Poorly. Um, but but he had really good chemistry with Karen Page. He had really good chemistry with Electra. We obviously know why he's not with Electra. Um, and I think if I remember correctly, season three of Daredevil, things are kind of left open-ended with Karen, but I don't quote me on that. It's been a while since I've seen it. Um, I'm kind of wondering what happened to Karen Page um, and whether or not, you know, he's he's back on the market. 
Hence why, I mean, clearly he's got to be back on the market if he's, you know, um, connecting with Jen. But yeah, any any thoughts or theories on that? Um, I really. usually don't get I usually don't get into love life like that. But I always, <laughs> I always go to the friends thing, and they were on a break. So there you uh, go. Yes, they 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 definitely I think we're on a break. Um, and then Jen, I know that you're you're kind of going through Daredevil. Um, so I, I you'll she's probably blonde, yeah. right? Yes, she's okay. uh, she works for Nelson and Murdoch. Um, yes, okay. And uh, yeah, I've gotten she's, that far. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, she's excellent. Um, the chemistry between the three of them is is really good. I'm sorry. Yeah. Continue. No, no, that's what I was just gonna say. You know, it could be we. How long since Daredevil in the MCU timeline? since daredevil ended till now how many years because this is what this would be have to be after 2023 because that was the end of endgame so um you know she's just getting her answers about steve and all that so we know we're still in that forward moving timeline so i mean so much can happen a lot (laughs) can happen things can happen so hey whatever makes them happy you know I, I really feel like I, I want to say Daredevil ended its run in 2018, maybe. Um, and if if it took place in 2018, um, and then of course uh, Endgame also, or sorry, Infinity War uh, took place in 2018 plus the five years. It's mm-hmm. excuse me, it's definitely been at least five years since yeah. you know uh, the end of Daredevil. So yeah, a lot can happen. It, it'd be nice uh, and we will get this eventually it'll be nice when we get to catch up with matt and kind of see um what's been going on in his life when daredevil born again hits in yeah. 2024 2025 2024 i think um I don't think it's yeah yeah um but but we can't wait to see that but it's nice to get a glimpse of him here and to kind of understand that Clearly, he's not with Karen. I think he's back on the market. And yeah. he's just uh, hopping between New York and L.A. So that's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> yes. um, but of course, Jen gets a call from Leapfrog. Um, and he's being chased by someone. And, you know, uh, she has to go investigate. And, you know, she suits up and immediately, like, stops the fleeing car with Matt Murdock on top. And therein is the first... Uh, the first real meeting between She-Hulk and, and Matt. Um, this was a very heavily publicized scene, I think. Um, there was a lot of clips on this and everything like that. So I think everyone on the internet who was interested in seeing Daredevil and She-Hulk connect had to have seen this um, if they haven't seen the full episode. What do you guys think of this scene um, and, and just their first meeting, um, this misunderstanding, this fight, this, this really cool fight? where Matt's ass remains unwhooped, but she's like ready to just, she just crushes the 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 uh, parking structure and everything splits and everything like that. I, I, I thought it was really cool. Uh, Jen, what were your thoughts on this entire meet cute? <laughs> <laughs> it was a heck of a way to meet somebody. Um, I, I think back to when me and my guy met and it was not quite that dramatic. Um, but I thought it was it was cute because, you know, at the end of it, when he says, you don't do this, you know, they get through the whole fight. She does the Sonic thing that that would mess with him more than anything else she's got yeah, in her arsenal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't even good. know the character that well. And I was like, oh, that's not good. Um, you know, I, I thought it was really cute. They still had that banter. He had the advantage of knowing who that was. So, you know, there was that going. But um, bless her heart. She just, I'm like, he sounds just okay. Uh, you know, like, come on we're smarter than that jen we we got this um it was a fun little fight you know on a on a disney plus budget which you know they had the some good effects and then the whole oh i need to go leave a note <laughs> uh, i i liked it i liked the whole i liked the whole banter all the way throughout till he jumped off the side of the building you know in that little yeah. spin jump um the whole the math thing <laughs> i'm not good at math either i get it so <laughs> Uh, don't worry. I just work in pharmacy. It's not, it's not a big deal, but um, yeah, it just, it was just back and forth. And, and the, the line you quoted about his butt being unwhipped that or unwhooped, that was the only line I was like, okay. <laughs> come on guys. Um, but the rest of it, it was just, it was just a fun, you know, you could tell they, they were there for the same, but different reasons. And they were actually going to end up working together 
she didn't know that he knew it. He just knew it the whole time. He just played along. I think he this was just fun for him, you know, because he knew he could he knew he could do it. But I'm watching him like when the parking structure is doing this and he's like falling down in it. I'm like, oh, I don't know anything about him and like his I know he has good hearing and he's a great lawyer, but that's all I really knew. So I'm like, is he gonna get hurt? Oh no, he's fine. And then when I when what came later, I was like, oh yeah, they can't hurt him because they need him for that scene to make everybody mad. So um, that was fun. I enjoyed it. It was a good lead into then the continued action downstairs. Mike, what did you think about this meet cute initially? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to pause you, Mike, because we got a redemption. Hydrate everyone. <laughs> this counts. It's fine. <laughs> it, it does. Yeah. I don't have anything. Right. Thank you I for that cue ball. Bottle. Yeah. Uh, I'm also seeing that he redeemed Stretch. So everybody put on your Reed Richards and let's. There we go. Right. Thank you for that, Cuba. Oh, yes. Thank you. There I we go. Feel much more limber. I feel Matt Murdock limber. Um, I wish I was that limber, but yeah. Um, thank you for that. Um, all right, Mike, back right. to you. Yes. Um, thoughts on the meet cute? I thought it was fun. Um, going back to wait, what are we doing the meet cute from the courtroom or are we doing the meet? Oh, sorry, from... no, the meet cute of uh, She Hulk and Daredevil. Oh, not as Daredevil. Jen and Matt. Okay, yeah, not Jen and Matt. Okay, not Jen and Matt. Yeah, but um, yeah, th it was a fun way to show off this kind of um, I guess the dichotomy of their powers. One is super strength, the other one's more a little bit more limber and agile, and um. Obviously, uh, man had the advantage a little bit because she's a public superhero and he's more of a you know, more of a down low public defender, public defender, <laughs> but with a secret identity, you know, yeah. alter ego sort of thing. And Jen just happened to use her sonic clap, and obviously that was to Matt's disadvantage. And it was a lot of fun to see that kind of fight scene back and forth. And um, as Jen was saying about the back and forth. Um, yeah, I, I really liked it. So, yeah. One of the things I love about Jen um, and just, you know, really smart thing to do that no one ever does in superhero movies. She has Matt on the ropes. Immediately she takes off the mask. That's what yeah. you do, people. That's what you're supposed to do. If you have a, a superhero on the ropes, um, you know, you got to you got to unmask them and see who they are. Um, and naturally, she's, of course, shocked that it's Matt. Um, one, because it's Matt. And two, because Matt is blind. So she has no idea that he's, you know, he, he, he has these powers, you know, the radar sense, the acute sense of touch, all of this. Um, so she she's wondering if he's faking it, like which is the initial reaction. Everybody, everybody thinks about when they unmask Matt, you know, when they find out that Daredevil is Matt Murdock. They're like, is he not blind? What the hell? Because Jessica Jones said the same thing, too. Um, and it's just, yeah, I, I, I think. She's like, it would be horrible if you were faking being blind. It's so problematic. And we're like, no, no, he really is blind, Jen. But I thought it was a really smart move for her to do that. Um, it, I thought it really was was also helpful for the fight because obviously she knows she can trust him. You know, the bar scene, him being a good lawyer, all of that. Um, you know. And we got <laughs> and, to see her super suit. And we got her to see her suit. super suit. I love that shot actually, where you see just like she opens the closet and you see like the the garment bag and she just unzips it and then boom, we got her She Hulk outfit, uh, which by the way looks so badass, right? I mean, mine like, came this week. I'm so excited. What's that? Yours came this week? Yeah. Okay. Feel free to say no. You want to show no. it? You want to? No. It's in okay. the other room. It's in the other room. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. It, it, time, it's the hopefully. it's the one. It it comes to like here. Like hers does, it has the same neckline, but it's the law, the it's all green on, okay. you know, it's, it's a full suit. So okay. I don't have to paint my whole body green because oh, thank I God. do yeah. not have time for that, but I will have to from here up and I don't have, and I'm having a wig made too, like the big black green. Yeah. yeah so I'm looking forward to seeing your rocket, Jen. I, I can't wait for pictures. When, when's the first time you're going to debut it? When you're fighting Daredevil, right? Um, when I'm fighting Daredevil, yeah. Got it. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, because you know, I go around picking on blind devil ninjas all the time. I live in the and high desert. You have to, suits. You know? Yeah. Oh, that was my favorite line. <laughs> mustard and ketchup. Much, yeah, the mustard and ketchup suit. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. Um, 
Which, I, which I, I, you know, for, for those of you who were like, why isn't his suit red? It's yellow. Why is it <laughs> it's yellow? Again, again. This is in the comics, guys. Yeah, this yeah. is in the original text. You're yeah. just kind of exposing yourselves in terms of how little you know about comics. So I am and judging it, you if you're complaining about that. Look, them. I don't know comics that well, but <laughs> I do know how to Google. <laughs> so, so I don't ask What's silly that? questions. I try to Google things. Just look them up. It's <laughs> in, in in every aspect of your life. It will save you a lot of heartache and looking yes. silly. And I did have to say the accuracy of that suit when they're fumbling trying to get it off of him because one of the things this is I should preface this as one of the leaders in the cosplay group. I'm often a wrangler at our events for the other cosplayers which means I help them suit up. I help them unsuit, not all the way, but there's zippers and snaps in places you can't reach, right? Yep. So I'm I'm watching them and I'm like, oh, if that's like a white sheep leather suit, that's going to take her like five minutes to get him out of that. <laughs> <laughs> there's zippers or snaps you don't think about. And I'm sure Luke maybe made it a little easier, but I don't think he made it with that in mind. So I just was like, man, this scene's really real. I get it. I yes the hard I felt the hardships of him desuiting um, yeah. later on the episode. Um, we did have a comment from our producer Stephanie. Um, season finale stream in reference to your costume, Jen. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe. But let me no let pressure. me do some makeup tests this week and see what I could. I don't even need the makeup because she technically has the suit on without yeah. being green. But I will just be green from the shoulders down. We I could, we know I could that. be convinced. We, we know that we would love that. We would love to see that for sure. Since I didn't make Charlie a TikTok yet for you, Mike, I will. <laughs> You'll suit up. I'll suit up. Yes. I love it. I love it. I feel like a hypocrite if I don't suit up, but I also don't have anything She-Hulk related at, at this point in time. So You don't have hair to... Oh, Colin. I, I, I'm thinking of Colin. I could put on a suit and glasses, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Um, that, yeah. Easy. Okay. I'll do I'll do that for, for season finale stream. Let's do it. Let's, let's, plan. let's commit I to like it. it. Yes. I love it. And then Mike, I don't feel pressured to do I, anything. <laughs> I'm not going to be available. <laughs> I'll Conveniently, be away. right? Conveniently. Conveniently. No, I'm joking. I'm, I'm totally kidding, Mike. Uh, understood. We will miss you for the season finale stream, but yeah, sorry, we'll be in costume okay. and we'll we'll hydrate one for you. Yeah. Not not a problem. And we still have a lot of show today to cover, oh, so yeah. it's not a big oh, yeah. so, uh, but, but yeah, just future plans well, so and <laughs> notes from Stephanie. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, there's some other stuff we need to talk about as well. There's, oh, yeah. there's a fair amount of other stuff that we need to talk about for sure. Before we get into that, uh, Q-Ball does have a question for us. Um, who wore it better? Who was a better Daredevil? Sorry, not who wore it better. I'm still on suits. Um, who was the better Daredevil? Charlie or Ben? I, I'm going to unanimous. Uh, I'm, I, for, for me, I feel like unanimously, majority, I'm, I'm not going to say unanimous, but majority of people out there, I think will probably say Charlie Cox. And I would be one of those people. I didn't think Ben Affleck was as horrible as everybody thought he was. Um, you know, it's not his fault if the script wasn't great or if Mark Stephen Johnson's direction wasn't great. But, um, you know, I mean, he, he deserved better than that. Having said that, though, Charlie Cox is kind of my daredevil, guys. I mean, like yeah. he's... He's really good. Um, his his show was fantastic. He was fantastic. At first, I I wasn't on board because he didn't really look like the Matt Murdock that I'm used to in the comics, you know. But he performed the living crap out of it. And to me, he's he's the only person I could see playing Daredevil at this juncture. Mike, you agree, right? I yeah, guess. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts on that? No. Well, I I like how they're trying to establish this whole thing with. Uh, this is the Marvel show by having Matt wear the gold and red suit or the yeah. mustard and ketchup suit. And and then we we know Matt from the Netflix show wearing the traditional red suit that we have custom to know and love. Um, yeah, so now I'm just thinking about what happened to Melvin. Did they just do Melvin dirty like that? <laughs> I, I, uh, I yeah. think... I'd be willing to bet that Melvin is the one that responsible for the golden red suit. You know, he's got, oh, but, he probably, you know, but, but wasn't Luke, uh, Luke, the one that oh, created shit. it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, So, yeah. so right. That, that, that's, that's what I'm mentioning about because Marvel uh, studios wants to make sure that, you know, this is what I'm interested in. How far is Marvel wanting to go to establish that this is a different kind of 
Daredevil from the Netflix show. That's what I'm interested in now. I'm very curious. And about is that this too. is this the t- segue to that, or is this just a little nod to something else? You think? Agreed. And and it's kind of funny because they they played the theme when we introduced. Yeah, um, that's true Matt. too. You know, yeah, they yeah, played yeah, the Netflix theme. Um, so I'm half wondering if it is connected again to Jen's point earlier, um, you know, five years is a long time relationships that we knew from the established Netflix series, whether it's, it's Melvin or whether it's Karen page, uh, these are things that people could move on from maybe Melvin, you know, quit the business or got hired by Luke or, or something like that. And then he's the one that's patching up daredevil suit. If he's Luke's employee, you know, um, which wouldn't be a stretch. He's got the hmm. skills. And if he gets paid for it from Luke Jacobson, you know, why not? So yeah. I'm sure there's ways that they can incorporate all of this. I really hope that they do because I don't want, you know, that Netflix series to just, you know, the, the elements established in that to just die. Um, hmm. We don't know. We'll see. I think yeah. Daredevil we'll Born see. Again will we'll answer those questions. Um, Jen, question to you, Char- Charlie or Ben, based off of the, the amount of Charlie that you've seen so far. So, I like Ben Affleck in certain roles. I don't like Ben Affleck in every role. Um, he's really good at playing Ben Affleck in a lot of cases. I loved him in Goodwill Hunting. I thought he was fabulous. Yeah. Um, but there's just, I don't know if he reminds me of someone I don't like. I don't know what it is. There's just something about him. So, when did the Daredevil movie come out? Do you know? 2003. February 2003. Yeah, so it was out by the time I was back working at Blockbuster. Okay, so I think I used to just see the case all the time and be like, "Eh, eh, eh." Um, (laughs) Charlie's had a lot longer to make that role his own, to be honest. He's had a lot longer, probably a lot better material, a lot. I I didn't I didn't see the Ben Affleck movie because I was like, Ben Affleck is a blind lawyer who's like, what? (laughs) This is when I still had little kids and I was too busy to realize I like superheroes that much. Um, You know, I had, I had in 2003, I had a three-year-old and a four-year-old. So I was, (laughs) good good reasons. Yeah. 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 Um, But I think just objectively looking at it from the outside, Charlie's had a lot longer to put his stamp on the role. And I don't think he would still be doing it. And they would have given him an 18 episode series if they didn't think he was the right guy. And I really like him. His little accent is just so cute. He does so, have a lot of charm. He does. So, He's very charming. At, at least among us, uh, Q-Ball unanimously, it's Charlie. Um, I think, I, you know, and no offense to Ben. I, I remember actually going to see Daredevil in the theater opening weekend. And I, you know, I wasn't hating on it as much as the rest of the audience around me, but you did have people unintentionally giggling at scenes. Uh, I think there was a scene where Daredevil and Kingpin were fighting and then Daredevil it has the choice to lend a landing death strike to Kingpin and he chooses not to and like hits the ground. And at that moment, supposed to be the serious dramatic moment, somebody in the audience was like, it's because he's blind. He didn't, he missed him, you know? And I was just like, <laughs> it's very oh, rude. That's terrible. That's terrible. Uh, so people are just making jokes. Um, that's, that's pretty much the reception that Ben Affleck Daredevil has had his, you know, the entire time that that's existed. Um, it's not a terrible movie if you watch the director's cut um quite frankly it's actually significantly better coolio is in that too r.i.p coolio oh that's Um, right yeah uh but it's yeah it's definitely not the 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 daredevil that we like um that that most people i think uh you know wanted to see so um charlie i think um now speaking of charlie and daredevil um one of one of the things that became a hallmark um, and Jen, you're gonna you're gonna find this out as the more that you watch the the deeper that you get in the Netflix series. One of the things that became a staple for that series were these insane hallway fight scenes that they yeah. would just that, that they would do. And I think that that gave everyone this this amount of joy just watching it, how brutal they are, how amazing they are, how perfectly well done they are. The action on that show is terrific. And yeah. we get a tease for a hallway fight scene in this um, where Daredevil goes into the the lily pad, lily pad. Um, and um, it encounters encounters a bunch of tadpoles um, who are about to advance on him and we we almost get the makings of a hallway scene uh akin to the traditional hallway scenes that we would get from the original daredevil series 
And Jen smashes through and just squashes all of them before they can get to that. That's going to um, be my on my tombstone. Jen just smashed through. Jen just smashed. Um, I, reminding people whose show it was, by the way, with authority. Um, any any thoughts on the? I I personally was slightly disappointed that we didn't get a little bit of hallway action, but I get it, and I'm happy that yeah, I thought it was funny and subversive. Um, but any thoughts on on that? Were you guys expecting this big showdown with Daredevil and the tadpoles, or were you <laughs> were you were were you okay with Jen just Hulk smashing? Um, Jen, I'll start with you. I really want one of those check things he had. Like that thing was fancy. Oh, he just Billy went, Club. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, but it yeah, like it Club, went apart yeah. and came back to get, I'm like, oh, it's fun. <laughs> um, why did the tadpoles all have crossbows? Is there is that a frog thing? Like I couldn't poison darts? Maybe it's the poison I don't Maybe know. Maybe it's it is a poison dart thing. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. We, were there. Just, we were watching it right before I came in here and my boyfriend was like, What's with the crossbows? Is is a frog do you hunt frogs with crossbows i'm like i don't like frogs i don't know um i think yes it was her saying this is my show it was giving us a taste of it they they're they're they've been meeting out this whole daredevil's coming he's coming here's a little bit you don't get the whole thing though um plus he has his own show 18 episodes to fight hallways left in hallways left in, probably to fight a hallway but um I was okay with it in the context of this show. Obviously, if it had been Daredevil, then that would have been like, Jen, that's rude. Go back to LA. So <laughs> I, don't, I just, I just thought it was good. And, and her, the whole thing with the math, the 15, the 25 henchmen and goons and 10 seconds each. And we don't have 30 minutes. And even I was like, what? No. Yeah. So, um, I can see where for Daredevil fans who wanted that whole experience of the hallway fight. Look, what we got was pretty great. That was, yeah. this was the best action short of Titania in the courtroom scene in the very beginning. This was the best action I feel we've gotten all season. So, or, or the whole series. Um, yeah, I was okay. I was, I was fine with it because again, it, it's her show. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Charlie. I was definitely when he was bouncing the billy clubs off the walls and everything. I was like, "He's back!" Yes, that yeah. was that was good enough. Yeah. I, I honestly a little, taste, a little taste, and little taste. and I was I was happy about it. You know, yeah. um, Mike, what about you? What'd you think? Uh, I was hoping they would do a little longer, like you said, and going back to being about just Jen, uh, it's the She Hulk. Um, I was hoping they would play around with the title again, it's like She Hulk, not about Daredevil or something like that. <laughs> At least to remind audiences that. Come on, this is not about Daredevil. I know we've been all waiting for it, but it's not about Daredevil. So, but still, it, it's it's nice that we can get that little tease, like you were saying about the hallways. Like, this is his sort of um, mon like montage. No montage. What is that? Sort of his thing. This is his signature, you know, yeah. fight scene that what he's known for, and for Jen just to come busting through like that. That that was incredible. It's like, you know what? This is my show. Why are you doing your thing? Why are you why are you bringing your thing onto my my turf, you know, don't don't do that. Don't don't rain on my parade. You're so not gonna just, upstage me, Murdoch. Yeah, Boom. you're not gonna. Upstage I just got me. why hallway fights would be really good for him because the acoustics would be oh. excellent. Oh yeah, so I yeah, bet yeah, that yeah. helps him out. That's true. That's why I, I and then like what Ma uh, Mike was saying, um, he was bouncing off the Billy mm -hmm. cups off the wall, so then you can hear and everything else. So, right. Yeah. Oh, very um, clever. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I that this is. Like everyone is saying, this is just Jen's show, but a nice little tease to mm -hmm. what um, what Daredevil's capable of and reminding us, yeah, what, what we're all talking about. Him. We'd definitely be remiss if we didn't acknowledge that as Jen's show, um, she brings up something kind of interesting um, after she, uh, after the coitus, um, which is... Um, <laughs> You know, why this is a satisfying ending. Why isn't the show ending? And we we'll find out very quickly why. And it's not it's not a funny reason, you know. Um, it's a very serious and very a you know, narratively satisfying progression um that we that we get the cliffhanger for. Um, but B also really tragic in a lot of ways, in a way that the show I think hasn't hasn't dealt with um in the past eight episodes, which is she gets her dress, which is lovely. She goes to the gala, which we're excited about. But I think deep down in our stomachs, we knew something bad was going to happen um, because this is how they were going to end things. Um, and I think she 
correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like she does do a little wink, wink, nod, nod um, when she's talking to us about why the show hasn't ended. Um, something's coming kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, she receives the, the award. And as we expect and have seen in real life, too, um, in, in an, you know, in an instance where art imitates life, we, we start seeing hackers take over. Uh, the award show and a bunch of crazy incels that work for intelligentsia um, just start blasting Jen. A bunch of misogynistic pieces of crap, um, you know, uh, really just destroying and tarnishing her images, filming these intimate moments because, uh, yeah. God, what's his name? Is such a Josh. Josh is such Josh. a big, uh, piece of crap. Yeah. Um, filming these intimate moments in her bedroom, trying to make her, you know, slut shame her and everything like that. When she's clear, she's obviously not, you know, uh, that kind of person, you know, right. and, you know, naturally we see something that up to now, Jen has been an amazing authority on, which is she's been able to really contain that anger and to control that anger and everything like that. Um, we've, we've known that about her since the first episode. And she just can't hear. And it's completely understandable why. It's This is an emotionally devastating moment. And it's in front of everyone and so many people when it should have been a moment of, of joy in her life. Um, and she hulks out. She really just rages. And the episode ends on a much on a real downer um, with her potentially getting arrested by the police, um, which is just, you know, shocking and exciting at the same time because we want to see where it goes. But um, what did you guys think about this ending? Um, Jenna, I'd love to start with you first. So it was, yeah, when she said that, I was like, oh, nothing good can come of this. Um, and then I was distracted because Nikki jumped out with the Wolverine claw makeup brushes, which was fantastic. <laughs> oh my God, I didn't call that and out. And I was yeah. like, okay, yeah. this is still fun. Yay. And then they go to the go to the gala and her parents are there and they're so proud. And can I just say again, how much I love, my 10 year old self loves seeing Mark Lynn Baker on my tv screen every week i adore him i loved perfect strangers and he's just he's so cute as her dad he's so earnest oh my god that's and larry that's larry yeah that's larry yeah oh jesus that's it took larry eight episodes. i didn't even know that was larry <laughs> i'm almost positive we talked about this the, the first time i was on it's okay I'm sorry, no yes that oh, is larry yeah i didn't catch yes, it it is larry slow, slow, so slow, slow. it's okay and then I got a bad feeling when I saw what's his name there, the floppy haired Wakanda spear guy. Cause Todd, Todd, thank you. Yeah. Todd. What a terrible human being. Jesus Christ. Uh, well, creating spears and everything too. So they, yeah. yeah, that whole scene. So that scene, I didn't like the scene at the restaurant. If we can backtrack a second, because to yeah. me, it was really, there was something off in the pacing. Like that scene felt very shoved in there yeah. um, to mm. bring Todd back. But there's a reason because I'm, a hundred well i'm like 98 percent sure when the voices pl are playing when the guys are talking the intelligentsia guys the one who says like kind of as an add-on and she's a slut that's todd that was his probably. voice probably and then i'm pretty sure he was one of the four people in the back the one that she caught because yeah. he had floppy hair and i was like uh, uh um i think that whole scene was jen making the best of it because they call her name, right? She's won this award. And then every other female lawyer in the building is given the same award. Like how to take, how to like give something and take it away in one breath. Right. And the first lawyer, when, they, oh, how does it feel being a woman lawyer? That question, like my neck tensed up. I was like, why, why would you ask that? And the first girl was like, I was like, is she in a pageant? She felt like one of the girls from uh, that Sandra Bullock movie where she goes undercover in the pageant, you know, Ooh, or drop next to yeah. 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 Just yeah. like, I, it's so uplifting. Shut up. And Mallory was the real one, right? Mallory, yeah. who, again, another phenomenal actress. She's Love Angelica <laughs> from Hamilton on Broadway and on Disney Plus, actually. So, um, you know, she's so versatile and she's just wonderful. And her her answer was perfect and then jennifer just wants to like i'm gonna make the best of this right i'm gonna i, I love my parents they're here to support me so i'm gonna thank them i have this moment and then i got so mad when they used the hundred percent soft <laughs> yeah like, why are yes. you ruining one of my favorite like, companies oh. right now i mean i know they let them you know they were involved but um i was like oh no because you knew it was going to happen at some point we, when we saw josh copying her phone we knew we knew he had done that we knew it was going to be used to 
a nefarious end but man in front of her parents and and pug and nikki and Eric, pug who's one of my favorites too you know they i don't know that i obviously can't get as mad as she does but i've been in situations where the way you're treated as a woman is so infuriating and you just want to you want to hulk out and smash something like you that's very honest so it was that scene i think my friend's comment about it was that she she was giggling through the whole episode and then screaming at the end it was something something along those lines and i'm like yeah a hundred percent that that's exactly how i felt i just was like they actually did that so it was rough (laughs) it's it's a emotionally this is a light show for the most part you know i mean like i think we've had seven episodes of lightheartedness it got dark and it got dark really fast you know um and and really heart-wrenching so 100 percent agree it's a very difficult scene to watch because you you feel for jen and you want you root for her so much and for for her to be put through this much crap um just in a moment too how horrible you know um mike any thoughts on your end on, on uh that? i don't think i will say this because like i said before jennifer's on honestly has covered it a, a lot of it but um i don't think this show could have been done as well if it was written by a man i think it, it really has to get you have to really let people like jessica gow and the other writers write from experience because they i'm sure they've all experienced that kind of uh harassment and you know all this demeaning um demeaning uh attitude story towards them because it, it's just really rough I, I i can't really speak about it because i just don't know that those experiences or anything but just to see that visually it, it's just heart-wrenching and you really feel for a jen who's just trying to make a name for herself trying to distance her her um just wants to be jennifer but you know she's constantly being tied back to she hulk career-wise um and it's just rough to see that she can't even be acknowledged or honored the way she wants to be because she has put in all the work and she she's become she wants to be this kind of person that that doesn't want to be defined by her you know her other image or anything else and all that's brought to light in the most horrific ways so yeah Ugh, what a devastating ending but something of a thrilling cliffhanger um there's just one episode to go left um you know for this show i have no idea where it's gonna go and i think that this this episode the way that it ends definitely sets you up for unpredictability um so excited and grateful to have you guys here to talk about this hopefully next week uh we'll we'll talk about something or we'll end on a happier note (laughs) my (laughs) hope is uh because i think with the finale being the finale, the hero has to win. Come on, guys. It's Marvel. We, she we knows a to... great lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> she, knows a great she, lawyer. she knows a lot of them, but I think Matt might, Matt might come to the rescue a little here. Hopefully so I, I also, too. but yeah. Was that the Department of Damage Control just waiting outside for her? Who called them? That's Do they just question. hang around wherever she is? Because I was like, those aren't cops. That's DODC. Yeah. <laughs> Todd. Gotta be Todd, you know? It's always Todd. He's a crap, stupid Todd. I hope she get. I, I hope he gets smashed. You know, um, not in the way yeah. he wants. No, 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 ah. not in the not in the Matt Murdock way. <laughs> no, but the, the no. Todd way. You know, I mean, yeah. Way. It's a right. different kind of walk, yeah. basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, he won't be able if, to. If he, if he can yeah, walk, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> if he yeah. can walk. <laughs> Um, well, guys, uh, we want to thank all of you guys for watching and for joining us for this episode. Um, I think I'm really excited for next week. Um, we the, Next week's the finale. Um, we'll see how things are. But for the most part, thank you guys for joining us for this adventure. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get to see you soon. Uh, before we wrap, Jen, where can everyone find you? <laughs> I'm on Instagram as at... Oh, oh, do underscore as underscore Peggy says. Um, and yes, my cat is Sir Charlie McFurface on Instagram. Um, he posted he was going to be on the show tonight, but he's sleeping. Such a diva. And then um, 
the Avengers Initiative. We're at Avengers Cosplay. And if you ever want to find a great way to use your cosplay for good and be a real hero for somebody, you know, look us up. We would love to have everyone come out and help us with our service endeavors. Thanks, Jen. And yes, we'd love to have you guys. As, as a member of the group, I can honestly yeah. say uh, this, this uh, the Avengers Initiative does a whole lot of good. Uh, real life superheroes and trying to trying to do their best to do good in the world. And I think that that's a very rare thing these days. So if you guys are interested in, in joining our cause, uh, the Avengers are looking for people. So Always. there you go. Yeah. Um, and then Mike, where can everyone find you? Uh, you guys can find me on all socials, um, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and TikTok. I'm trying to do TikToks a little more. But um, all of that on at uh, I am Michael J. Lee. And as I as I mentioned at the top, I'm Mike Manalo. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. You can find me at TidyBullBoy182 on Instagram and Twitter. But uh, for all of the coverage on any nerd stuff, uh, check out mine and Mike's uh, you know site, uh, thenerdsofcolor.org. Uh, you can also find me on whattowatch.com, and that's at LA. Um, so having said that, thank you guys so much again for this amazing episode. Thank you guys for listening, and uh, Hulk out. Bye. Peace. Bye.